So what's going on guys, Kaze here and welcome back to a brand new video where today I will show you the top 3 best builds that you can solo bosses in under 60 seconds in the first descendant. So for each and every single build I will show you what weapons and modules you want to get. Then I will explain every single skill and show you the best stats and external components. And then lastly we will take a closer look at the gameplay and mods so you would be able to get the best results and the highest damage possible and much more. If this sounds interesting to you, then let's get right into it. So our new J-Bear build is insanely powerful, because we will use both of our turrets to take the attention from us, so then the boss would leave us alone, and uninterrupted, we could do insane amount of damage numbers. As you can see from the gameplay, we are doing 85 to 100k DPS per crit, and with better upgrades, we would be able to do even more. So then with that said, now let's take a look at our modules. For the first one we have the turret engineering, which when we use a skill, it recovers HP of all summoned turrets and extends their duration. Then the tonfa that modifies the charge sub attack, but most importantly increases our max module capacity, which is the reason why every single build has at least one of these modules equipped. It then increased HP, that increases our max HP by 22%, then energy collection that increases our mana recovery by 14%, then an iron will, which does that when our shield is at 0%, it will increase our defenses by 32%, then maximize efficiency, that reduces our skill cost by 4%, but reduces our max mana by minus 1%, then nimble fingers, that decreases our skill cooldowns by 6%, then HP amplification, that increases our max HP by 23%, but decreases our max shields by minus 9%, then medical support, that increases our HP heal by 8%, and finally increased death, that increases our defenses by 16%. So overall our main goal with this setup is to improve our turrets, decrease skill cooldowns and increase our defenses. With this build we will deal insane amount of damage, but we can't forget about one of the main reasons of why we can solo bosses, which are our skills aka the turrets so we have to upgrade them as much as possible, so they could survive long enough for us to kill the enemies before they start attacking us. I've done countless of hours of testing, and this was by far the best module setup. Then next up let's take a look at the weapons and weapon mods that we should use. So for our weapon loadout, the first one is the Eternal Willpower. This is not an ultimate weapon, so we won't get any unique effects, but because of our mods we will do crazy amount of damage and you can get it by farming the Aegna Desert Zone, the Commanding Ground Battlefield mission, or the Red Sphere mission. The Eternal Willpower is a rare assault rifle that you can only get through the random drops from these areas. And then when you get it, for mods we wanna go with the Rifling Reinforcement, that increases our ADK by 12%, then Action and Reaction, that increases ADK by 15%, but as well increases our recoil by 5%, then Better Insight, which increases our critical hit rate by 8%, then concentration priority, that increases our critical hit damage by 8%, and reduces reload time modifier by minus 8%, then better concentration, which increases our critical hit damage by 9%, then fire rate up, that increases our fire rate by 6%, and finally the electric enhancement, that adds electric ADK equal to 8% of our weapon's ADK. As you can see because of our setup, we can do half a million DPS. So our setup, like for most players, is focused on ADK, crit damage and crit rate increase as much as humanly possible. Then for our second weapon we wanna use the Nazestra's Devotion, which when you hit enemy weak points, it will apply a unique ability called the Devotion Mark, that reduces the enemy's defenses by 30% for 3 seconds. This weapon is very overpowered to just one shot trash enemies, or to use them on boss weak spots. This ultimate weapon will require for you to reach mastery rank level 1 before you can craft it with the Magister's Anus in Albion. To craft this weapon you will need 1 Nazester's Devotion, Alimir Synxium, then 1 Synthetic Fiber, then 1 Nano and 1 Blueprint, which all of them you can form in the Vespers, Timberfall and in the Ancient Giant 3 mission. And then when you get the weapon, we wanna use mods like the Action and Reaction that increases our ADK by 15%, and reduces recoil by 5%, then bullet rain that increases our fire rate by 8%, and ADK by 1%, then rifling reinforcement 
that increases our ADK by 12%, then weak point sight, that increases our weak point damage by 10%, but reduces accuracy by minus 5%. Then better concentration, that increases our critical hit damage by 9%. Then target detection, that increases our critical hit damage by 5%. And weak point damage by plus 2%. Then aiming compensation, for 8% accuracy and 5% critical hit damage. Then weak point detection, that increases our weak point damage by 5% and ADK by 1%. Then weak point expansion, that on weak point hit, it will increase your weak point damage by 35%. And finally the better insight, or 10% critical hit rate. As for most of the weapons, we use the mods to increase our weapon's damage. And because of our unique ability, that gives us better weak point damage, so we try to focus with our mods to increase its damage even more. For that one shot capability. This is a secondary weapon that I rarely use, so as long as you use the first weapon, then the second and third weapon slots are up to every player's preference. And finally, for our third weapon of choice, we have the Afterglow Sword Sniper Rifle. On hitting a weak point, this weapon will inflict the unique effect called the Dead Propagation, which increases our critical hit rate and applies this effect to our next attack. We mainly want to use the sniper for long range fights, and then the way you get it is by collecting all the items, reaching Mastery 15 and researching it for 100,000 gold by talking to the Aeneas at Albion. You can get the Afterglow Sword Blueprint, Nano Tube Blueprint, and Polymer Synxium by farming the Intercept Battle on Hard Mode. And for the last Afterglow Sword Synthetic Fiber Blueprint, you can get it from the Vespers on the Kingston Hard Mode. And then when you have it, we wanna use mods like the Weak Point Sight, that increases our Weak Point damage by 10%, but decreases accuracy by minus 5%, then Better Insight, which increases Firearm Critical Hit Rate by 10%, then Fatal Critical, that increases critical hit damage by 5% and critical hit rate by 1%. Then strengthen First Shot, that after you reload, your first shot gets 100% ADK increase. Then Action and Reaction, that increases explosive ADK by 15% and recoil by 5%. Then Better Concentration, or increased firearm critical hit damage by 9%. And finally the Focus on Fire, that increases fire skill power by 19% and decreases skill cooldown by minus 6%. As any sniper weapon, we want to increase our crits and overall damage. So with our mod setup, we have made it, that you can basically crit the enemies 100% of the time. Then next up, let's go over to the best reactor and external components. So your reactor is very important item, that determines your skill damage, and can also include extra modifiers, that buff certain aspects of your build. The better your reactor is, the more damage your skills will deal to enemies. I recommend prioritizing using Reactor, with a high skill power and a sub-attack power. Specifically, my best job that I got is this materialized phase reactor, with the hand cannon condition, so it's perfect for our build. And then as for your external components, they're even more of an RNG, at least until you've played the game for long enough, to find basically every possible combination with a good stat roll. For our build specifically, I recommend to get the Unhiliation Auxiliary Power, that increases our defenses and HP. Then Anhiliation Sensor, that increases our defenses and max mana. Then Anhiliation Memory, for increased max HP, defenses and electric resistance. And lastly the Anhiliation Processor, for more max HP and toxic resistance. And because we use all 4 of the Anhiliation set piece, we get to increase our skill duration by 5.7% and our weapon's ADK increases proportionally. So our max HP lost, so the lower HP we are, the more damage we will do which becomes useful if all of our turrets die, and then we need to take a bit of damage from the enemies while we activate the new turrets. So, for our new Lepic build, we will focus on getting as much DPS as possible, while getting even more AOV buffs or our burn effects. This specific setup is made around stacking burn, AOV and most of our skills, to spam them 24-7 while waiting for our ultimate skill, to do massive amounts of damage to all the types of enemies, but especially bosses. And by doing this, we will be melting anyone you come across. Right now in the current meta, Lepic is one of the highest damage characters, but only if you play him right and optimize all the modules and mods. So I've done countless of hours of testing and here what I came up with. So then with that said, now let's take a closer look at our build modules. And for the first one, we wanna use the multi-maneuvering, that modifies the max tax of grappling hook to 3, 
but then the base range decreases to 18 meters, and the charge time increases by 20%. On top of this, we will increase our module capacity, which is our main goal. Then second of all, we have the emergency measures. That increases skill critical hit rate by 16% and skill critical hit damage by 7%. Then front lines. That increases skill critical hit damage by 16% and skill critical hit rate by 7%. So pretty much both of these modules are the same thing. So we will get double the bonuses. Then skill simplification. That increases skill power modifier by 21%, but decreases max mana by minus 6%. Then focus on fire. That increases fire skill power by 19% and decreases skill cooldowns by minus 6%. Then skill concentration. That increases our skill critical hit damage by 14%. Then battle of stamina. That increases max HP by 12% and skill duration by 8.8%. Then spear and shield. That increases our defenses by 22% and skill power by 8%. Then time distribution, that decreases the skill cooldown by minus 4% and increases max HP by 13%. Then skill extension, that increases skill duration by 9%. And finally the enlightenment, that increases our max mana by 4%. So overall our main goal with this setup is to mainly use the emergency measures and skill concentration for massive amounts of damage increase. And then the rest of the modules are primarily for decreasing cooldowns because a lot of our AOV damage will come from our skills. So the more often we use them, the more damage we will be able to do. Then next up, let's take a look at the best weapons and mods that we should use. So for our weapon loadout, the first one is the Thunder Cage Submachine Gun. This is currently the number one meta weapon that doesn't need any introductions. But basically, we will get up to half of million damage. And when I farm more for my reactor, we could get this number even much higher. So the way you get this insane weapon is by first of all reaching the mastery rank 1, then obtaining the Thunder Cage Blueprint, Thunder Cage Nanotube, Thunder Cage Polymer Syncium, and Thunder Cage Synthetic Fiber from various battlefield missions across the sterile land. And afterwards you can take those four cage materials to the Anais in Albion and pay 100,000 gold to start the research request and that's it. So then when you got it, for mods, we want to use the Rifling Reinforcement, that increases our Explosive ADK by 12%. Then Action and Reaction, that increases Explosive ADK by 15%, but increases Recoil by 5%. Then Weak Point Insight, that increases Weak Point Damage by 5%, and Critical Hit Rate by 1%. Then Better Insight, that increases Critical Hit Rate by plus 10%. Then Consume a Magazine, that increases Reload Time Modifier by 6% and weak point damage by 2%. Then better concentration, that increases critical hit damage by 9%. Then fire rate concentration, that increases fire rate by 8%, and critical hit damage by 3.5%. Then concentration priority, for 8% critical hit damage increase, but reload time modifier gets decreased by 8%. And finally the chill enhancement, that adds the chill ATK equal to 8% of your weapon's ATK. With these mods, like for most of the weapons, we will focus on increasing our damage and because of our insane buffs from the rest of our setup, we will focus on as much crit and explosive damage as possible. Then for our second weapon, we wanna use the Tamer. This is another amazing weapon, but just with more rounds per magazine and much more slower movement speed. So we will switch between the Thunder and the Tamer, depending on if you are constantly on the move or if you can just stand still and burst the enemy down with no interruptions. And the way you can get this weapon is by farming the Aegna Desert Zone and the mission is called the Abandoned Restriction Site in the Remnant Area. The Aegna Desert is the 5th overworld zone in the game and you must play through the main story campaign to unlock access to it. And this weapon can only be dropped as a random loot drop. And then when you get this weapon we wanna use mods like the Rifling Reinforcement that increases our explosive ADK by 12%, then expand weapon charge that increases our rounds per magazine for 12%. Then fire rate concentration, that increases fire rate by 8% and critical hit damage by 3%. Then toxic enhancement, that adds explosive ADK equal to 8% of weapons ADK. Then antimatter round, that increases our explosive ADK by 8% and critical hit damage by 3%. And finally the better concentration, that increases critical hit damage by 9%. 
The reasoning for this weapon is very similar to the Thunder Cage, because with these mods, we try to increase our weapon's damage by critting as much as possible. And as from our skills, we will already do great explosive damage, so combining this with the weapon's AUV, we will be unstoppable. And finally, for our third weapon of choice, we have the Afterglow Sword Sniper Rifle. On hitting a weak point on the enemy, this weapon will inflict the unique effect called the Dead Propagation, which increases our critical hit rate and applies this effect to our next attack. We mainly want to use the Sniper for long range fights, but usually my third weapon slots are flex slots. So again, as long as you use the first two weapons, the last one is up to you. But I really like this weapon, as you can use it for multiple descendants at the same time. And then, the way you get it is by collecting all the items, then reaching Mastery 15 and researching it for 100,000 gold by talking to the Aeneas at the Albion. You can get the Afterglow Sword Blueprint, Nanotube Blueprint and the Polymere Syncytium by farming the Intercept Battle on the Hard Mode. And then for the last Afterglow Sword Synthetic Fiber Blueprint, you can get it from the Vespers on the Hard Mode, or from the Kingston on the Hard Mode as well. And then when you have it, you can use mods like the Weak Point Sight, that increases our Weak Point damage by 10%, but decreases accuracy by minus 5%, then Better Insight, which increases our critical hit rate by 10%, then Fatal Critical, which increases our critical hit damage by 5%, and critical hit rate by 1%, then strengthen first shot, which that after you reload, your first shot gets 100% ADK increase, then action and reaction, that increases explosive ADK by 15%, and recoil by 5%, then better concentration, or increased critical hit damage by 9%, and finally the focus on fire, that increases our fire skill power by 19%, and decreases skill cooldown by minus 6%, as any sniper weapon, we want to increase our crits and overall damage. So with our mod setup, we have made it that you can basically crit the enemies 100% of the time. Then next up, let's go over to the best reactor and external components. So your reactor is very important item that determines your skill damage and can also include extra modifiers that buff certain aspects of your build. The better your reactor is, the more damage your skills will deal to enemies. I recommend prioritizing using a reactor with a high skill power and a sub attack power. Specifically, my best job that I got is this burning singularity reactor, but I'm still farming to get the better optimization condition that would be compatible with one of my three weapons. And then as for your external components, they're even more of an RNG, at least until you've played the game for long enough to find basically every possible combination with a good stat roll. For our build specifically, I recommend to get the HP support sensor that increases our max HP, then defensive support memory that increases our defenses, then HP support processor for even more max HP, and finally the Tom Wong Ward processor for more defensives. I've tried multiple setups and going half in defenses and half in max HP was the best decision, so we can survive large amounts of enemy damage. So then let's move over to the build. This character is an insane nuker who sprints while discharging electricity. The more she runs, the greater the electrical energy she accumulates. Bunny specializes in dealing electrical lightning damage to the enemies, particularly in AUV. Bunny can get very high DPS by just hitting a large number of enemies. Your skills will cast electricity, so if you run out of it, then they will be unusable until you generate more. Bunny can generate electricity by moving quickly, so for this build I recommend to use the lightning speed skill as much as possible. And as you can see, as long as you will be doing that, we will get insane one-shot damage. This new build works that we stack new several skill damage bonuses on top of each other to gain very high AUV damage. The only important thing to keep in mind is when playing this build, keep spamming your lightning speed skill to generate electricity, and for bosses and even stronger enemies that need 2 or 3 shots to get one shotted, then just keep debuffing them with the electrocute, so you could boost your damage even higher. If this type of gameplay sounds interesting to you, then have fun one-shotting your enemies. Then now let's take a look at our build modules. So here we have the best modules for your leveling build. You should be able to get this by approximately level 25 to 30. This is a good base setup to have before preparing to farm the max level bunny build. So we want to get the strong mentality to reduce your skill resurrection cost, then increased HP that will increase our max HP, then skill cost optimize that reduces our skill cost, 
then Electric Master, which increases the skill power and skill Electric Power, then Electric Specialist, which considerably increases your Electric Skill Power, and adds a multiplier to our stats, called the Electric Skill Power Boost Ratio, then Dual Class, that increases our Max Module Capacity, then Skill Expansion, which increases your Skill Effect Range for valid skills, then Nimble Fingers, that reduces your skill cooldown, and finally increase defensives, which increase our defense stats. And after that is done, now we are ready for our one-shot max level module setup. So for the endgame build I recommend to use the Shock Punch, Skill Expansion, Increase Defensives, MP Collector, Increased HP, Focus on Electric, Nimble Fingers and Skill Extension. And then finally, let's take a look at the best weapons and stats that we should use. So, for the bunny build, the Thunder Cage submachine gun is the only important weapon for our loadout. This submachine gun is the ultimate weapon, which emits an electric shock wave that creates the appearance of thunder being directed at the enemy. When killing enemies, they have a set chance of discharging electricity shock wave that deals additional damage to nearby enemies. This is an insanely high DPS weapon with a quick fire rate, which suits our build playstyle the best. And then for our weapon mods, here are the best ones like the better concentration, rifling reinforcement, better insight, action and reaction, toxic enhancement, focus fire and concentration priority. And again the same thing as for modules. We can easily leave the empty spaces free, as using only the best mods are way better, then just clumping up a bunch of average mods. Then after that now let's go over to the best reactor stats. So your reactor is very important item that determines your skill damage and can also include extra modifiers that buff certain aspects of your build. The better your reactor is, the more damage your skills will deal to enemies. I recommend prioritizing using a reactor with a high skill power and a sub attack power. After that you can look out for reactors with a boost to your skill critical hit damage, which will improve the amount of damage dealt when you land a critical hit. Specifically, my best job that I got is this tingling singularity reactor which has the Thunder Cage mounting condition. But if you don't have this yet, then you can just focus on the skill power and try to farm this one whenever you can. And then finally, we have the external components. With your external components, you will be somewhat subject to RNG, at least until you've played the game for long enough, to find basically every single possible combination with a good stat roll. For our bunny build, I recommend getting the Supernova Auxiliary Power, that increases our max shields. Then the Supernova Sensor, that increases our shields again. Then Supernova Memory, that increases our defensives. And lastly the Supernova Processor, that increases even more of our defensives. The reason why I focus on defenses and shields is because we already have so much damage that I personally prefer to keep doing that damage instead of being one-shotted by the enemies. But of course it's up to you, you can either way make your build more survivable so you won't die from getting one-shotted by the enemies. Or on the other hand you can do even a bit more damage, on top of the already insane damage we have. I personally recommend my choice, but this won't break the build. So if you prefer the different way then go ahead.